Nova City Space Station calling Captain Star. Nova City Space Station calling Captain Star. Report for a special space mission. And now for today's thrilling adventure in space with Captain Star, the Carmunian Return. <laughs> General Chickering, you wanted to see me, sir? Oh, yes, Star. Uh, glad you returned from your mission safely. So am I, sir. Star, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to give you another assignment immediately. Yes, sir. I've just received a communication from our agents on Neptune. Do you recall the Neptunian scientist, Carmunius? Yes, I believe so, sir. One of the most brilliant scientific minds in the universe. Precisely, Star. He's here in Nova City. He wants to see you. But, but that's impossible, sir. Is it, sir? I have received a message from him. General, you, you couldn't have. The Neptunian scientist Carmunius has been dead for 50 years. <laughs> Skipper, what's the matter? You look sort of funny. I don't feel funny. Well, what's wrong, Skipper? Did you see General Chickering over at Space Headquarters? Yes, Gail, I saw him. We have another assignment. Well, what kind of an assignment? Communius. Communius? You mean the scientist from Neptune who died about a half century ago? Yeah, that's the one, all right. <laughs> what, what kind of an assignment can we have with a dead man, Skipper? We'll know soon, Strike. This dead man's going to pay us a visit. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? Is it? Well, sure. Look, when you go, you go, that's all. I mean, dead men don't go around visiting people. This one does. He's already visited a way of General Chickering. I have the utmost confidence in Chickering. And he swears that the man he talked to was actually Communius. He's as baffled as we are. Well, what does this... Carmunius want with you, Skipper. I don't know, Gail. Carmunius wouldn't tell General Chickering anything other than that I was to be located at once and wait here in my office. You, you mean Carmunius wouldn't tell the General the purpose of his return or even give him an inkling? Just one inkling, Strike. Well, what was that? That the fate of the entire universe depends on my meeting with Carmunius. Alone. Yes. Yes. Hey, Skipper. Well, well, what's the matter? Yes. Yes, I'll do it. I'll do exactly as you say. Skipper, who are you talking to? Stripes, you and Gail go back to the spaceport and prepare our ship for blasting. I'll join you later after I meet with Communius. Well, why, Skipper? I mean, you act almost as if you've gotten orders to blast. I have. Communius just gave them to me. <laughs> Captain Star, I am Carmunius. You died 50 years ago. Precisely. Yet you're here now. You stand before me and you speak. Precisely. As I recall, you were lost in a space flight towards some unexplored moon. Yes, Captain. My spaceship crashed on the Neptunian moon Argo. I was killed instantly. Would you mind explaining then how... You can walk around Nova City 50 years later in an apparent excellent state of health? In due time, Captain, in due time. First, your orders. I see you have obeyed the one I sent you by hypnotic telepathy. Yes, I... You got through to me, all right. Good. That means our mental processes are well-tuned. It will make your mission easier. Mission? Precisely, Captain. Mission. Your mission is to blast off for the moon Argo. The moon Argo is off all charted space lanes, Communius. It's a dangerous flight to make. Not nearly so dangerous as not making it. Well, what do you mean? I mean you will obey my orders without question, or you and the entire universe shall be destroyed. <laughs> Right, slow rocket. 
Skipper, check number two scanner. Hurry. I'm on number two scanner now, Jeff. I'm picking up a flight signal from it. We're getting the signal in here now. Well, what is it? It looks like an asteroid, yet it doesn't. It must be the moon, Argo. It must? I mean, what must be what? Gail, stand by to establish orbit for our ship. You mean... You mean we're going to land? Yes. Christ, you'll stand by here with the blasters ready. If Gail and I aren't back in 30 minutes, start after us. Argo is. Yes, ma'am. About 200 degrees below zero. Our electro suits will keep us warm. Nothing but rock and desolation and loneliness. Tom Muni has told me that beyond that rise over there is the lost spaceship he crashed in. All right. Let's go have a look. There, Gail. See? Why, there actually is a wrecked spaceship down there. I mean, we've had to talk to someone. Yes, Gail. That's the ship Communius crashed in 50 years ago. Skipper, you're, you're back. Yes, Fred. I was about to leave the ship and start looking for you. You know, I was getting worried. Hey, you both look half frozen. Oh, we are, Sly. Well, here. Here are a couple of caloric tablets. I'll help get your heat, heat energy back. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you know, you find anything? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the lost uh, communion spaceship bodies were all there. Well, what about communions? I wonder why he ordered us up here to Argo. No, I, I don't get it. On well, second thought, maybe I don't want to get it. Oh, it scares me. Perhaps communion really isn't dead. Perhaps... Oh, I don't know. What is the answer? That's something we probably can't find an answer to, Gail. Psychic phenomena, well, it isn't new. In fact, the ancient Earth people practiced it, experimented with it. There have been many cases in the past of people talking to the dead. Yeah, but aren't most such cases fake? Some undoubtedly are, of course. But many apparently aren't, strikes. Well, we don't know. We can't explain some things that have happened. Communius was a brilliant man... Wasn't he, Skipper? Yes, Gail. One of the most brilliant in the universe. Well, then, isn't it possible that during his studies and experiments, he did find a method to, well, to come back, to return from the dead? With a mind as brilliant as Carmenius, anything is possible. Well, what are we going to do now, Skipper? Yes. Yes. Skipper, that look on your face. Is it Carmenius? Yes. Yes, I hear you. Yes, right away. Skipper, where are you going? I'll be back soon. Stripes? Yes, sir? Communicate with Scientific Space Investigation down in Nova City. Tell them that this is a blue emergency. Tell them I've just received information that the entire universe is in deadly danger. Tell them to alert the populations of the major cities. I I wish I could, Skipper. What in the universe do you mean, Stripes? Our communicator's dead. who believe that death is a state of mind. There are some who believe that one cannot die until his work is completed. Is that what you believe, Communius? I have roamed the windswept reaches of this lonely moon for 50 years. For 50 years, I have walked these desolate moors with only time and space for companions. 
listening to the messages come in on the wind. And so it shall be for all eternity. Because the goodness in man should never die. And you never really died, did you? No, Star. I never really died. You say that so strangely. What are your powers, Communius? They deal with the mind and with matter. Someday all mankind will know such things, Star. You speak of the universe being in deadly danger. What is the nature of this danger, Communius? Did you communicate with Earth and warn them as I instructed you? I couldn't. The communicator said that... Wind is gone. Deathly quiet. Then perhaps I am too late. Star, hurry. Get to your spaceship and blast off at once. Where, Communius? Where? For my old laboratory on top of Mount Orlo on the planet Neptune. What's that? A planet quake. Hurry, Star. What's happening here will happen to every planet in the universe unless you can stop them. Skipper. Skipper. Uh, Skipper, come on. we got to get out of here. Hey, what are you doing here all alone? Well, I'm you. There's no one here but you. I... What's the matter? I don't know. Just a falling rock. Smack me. Here, no. Here. Let me help you. Gail's getting the rockets revved up. Come on. Come on. There's the ship. Fly. Fly. Hurry. I'm trying to. Come on, skipper. Here, let me help you. What happened to the skipper? He passed out. Here, get him inside. I'll go forward to the rocket control. All right. Well, you better pray we can blast off of this planet. Quick. All right, get him down there. Is he okay? All right, Pipes. Right. Right. Pick her up. Ready? One, two, three. Here it goes. <laughs> I was talking to him, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure you were, Skipper. Well, hang it all, I was. No, let's forget it. Oh, that's a good idea. You rest a while, Skipper. Head for Mount Orlo on Neptune. Orlo, but why there? I don't know. Is the communicator working yet? No, sir, I I just tried it. I'm going after the bunkhouse and lie down a while. Stripes, keep those rockets wide open for Neptune. If we don't make it soon, we'll be too late. Yes, Captain. Shut the door, please. I've been waiting for you. How did you get in here? How did I get down to Earth to contact you? Why, I don't know. More of my strange powers, Captain. It would take a lifetime to explain them. Communius, I'm afraid I don't follow you. In fact, I, I don't even really know why I'm here. That's precisely why I selected you for this mission. Because you're intelligent enough not to ask too many questions. You merely believe, and you obey without understanding. Yes, but I don't know why. No, you don't know why. But you do know that I'm not evil. Yes, I do know that. Why are we heading for Mount Orlo, Communist? There is an evil man there, Star. He possesses a formula for cosmic destruction based upon a machine I spent a lifetime constructing. He caused the planet quake on the moon Argo. With this new power, he can destroy the universe. How can I stop this man? I have here a key, Star. It is a key made out of a combination of gold, iridium, and tannium metals. It is the key to my cosmic machine, Star. When it makes contact with my machine, it will neutralize the machine's power and make it useless. You mean you took this key with you when you blasted off 50 years ago from the moon, Argo? Yes, Star. I made a mistake then. I turned on the machine with this key. I trusted the man I left in charge. Unfortunately, I crashed. It was only recently I learned of this man's intention to destroy the universe with my machine. That is why I returned to contact you. What do you want me to do, Tom Unius? You will take this key, Star. 
You will go to my laboratory on Mount Orlo, and you will destroy my cosmic machine. All right. You will also destroy the man who is there. Who is this man? He will appear to you very similar to the way I look to you now. When I last saw him, he was very young. But as he grew older, he also grew evil. My assistants trained him in my knowledge. He is my responsibility to the universe, Star, and he must be destroyed. Who is he, Communius? He is my son. Right, Skipper. Well, there's Mount Arlo right below us. Yeah? And that building on top must be the laboratory. Oh, well, Skipper, are you sure you know what we're doing? After all, we haven't cleared this with Neptunian authorities. The Neptune government's liable to make a protest to Earth. The chance we'll have to take, Gail. Set her down, Stripes. of Communius? I am his son. We wish to see your laboratory and your cosmic machine. Why? By what right do you invade my privacy? We were on the moon, Argo, this morning. There was a planet quake there caused by some cosmic activity. We've traced the cosmic beams here to this spot. Ah, then the planet quake was successful. Quite successful. Good. You have saved me a space trip to check on the results. You are a brilliant man. More brilliant than even your father. Yes, and I will do more with my brilliance than my father did with his. We should like very much to see your laboratory. Why? Oh, we're interested in scientific experiments of all types. And we were amazed at the results of your experiments on Argo. You're a very brilliant man. Thank you. Come in. Here is my laboratory. laboratory in the universe. And over there is the machine that caused the destruction on Arnold. Hey, look, Skipper. Dynamos, electronic gadgets, and dials and gauges. Right, Stripes. And in the center, place for the key. Come on, Stripes, while I go to the machine. Okay, friend, just stand still or use this blaster. What is the meaning of it? You, what are you doing over there at my machine? Go on! Over with dirt and rocks. 
since the planet quake. Mm-hmm. Just like a grave, isn't it? Or a monument, perhaps. Hey, Skipper. Yeah? Hey, look. O- over there. Yes. Along the horizon. A figure. Walking across the moor. All alone. You, you don't seem surprised, Skipper. Hey, you, you wave to him. And he waved back. Did I, Stripes? Well done, Captain Star. Thank you, Cornelius. Hey, Skipper. Am I dreaming, or did I hear that guy say something? Maybe you were dreaming, Stripes. Maybe we all are. I have roamed the wind-swept reaches of this lonely moon for 50 years. For 50 years, I have walked these desolate moors with only time and space for companions. And so it shall be for all eternity. Because the goodness of man should never die. You're right, Communis. The goodness of man shall never die. Space is created and written by Tom Hubbard and Fred Eggers, directed and produced by Al Ganaway for Bill Broidy Productions. That's all for today, boys and girls. Be sure and join us next week for another Saturday morning adventure. Thank you.